I built a homemade snowmobile to make winter fun again. Taking it on a sketchy trip to a secluded cabin deep in the Norwegian mountains. But can my engineering hold its own against the Norwegian wilderness? Or will a man with planks and tent poles get the better of me? Now for those who don't know, I built this go-kart from a hand truck. Yeah, a hand truck. But I live here in Norway with its beautiful scenery. And to be honest, it sucks because it's winter half the year. Which means I can't drive this thing. Which is so disappointing because clearly it's mad fun to drive. So, we need to winterify it. Or as I like to call it, garage avengerify it. So how are we going to garage avenger fire this? Well, with some cheap Chinese parts. Yeah, baby, look at this. Skis, baby. Oh, and tracks. Yeah, look at those things. Now, I know I'm not the first to do this, but I want to test for myself if these parts are any good. I mean, these were 250 bucks on AliExpress. You can get them cheaper even, depending where you live. But hopefully these parts will get me driving all winter long. There you go. Thank you. Right. Skis and tracks. So my question is, is it as easy as just yeah. them on. Yeah, of course. Because what I see is that if I tilt this over a little bit, that thingy here is much bigger than that. Do you call it the axle? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm impressed, babe. You saw that straight away. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm so, Im <laughs> I'm literally impressed that you got I'm not, that. I'm not all just unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> No, you're not. Look at that. Look at you engineering things. <laughs> yeah. Impressing somebody. Uh, that is the the it hidden problem serious. that I haven't told the audience yet, is the fact that that splined axle mount on the ski tracks yeah. is bigger than the axles I have on this current go kart. Yeah. So now I have to find a solution on how to fix that. Yeah. But actually, how is it going to do that? The snow tracks ran a T23 spline and my rear axle was only a T17. But lucky for me, I had a T23 splined rear axle from my pallet go-kart. Which on a side note, was probably the silliest thing I've ever built. But the rear axle happened to be a perfect fit. Now I could have just changed the rear axle but then I'd have to change the brake position, drive gear position, and this one was way too long. However, the flange plates on the rear axle gave me an idea. If I could 3D model a part in Fusion, then maybe I'd be able to bolt the snow tracks to the original rear axle. However, I'm not very good at 3D modeling yet, and this took a couple of tries to get right. After 3D modeling and printing three different iterations, I finally was happy with the fit. Then I realized this was a stupid idea. The tracks were way too far apart, and they were gonna bend my rear axle. It's funny how you get deer in headlights when you think you've got a good idea. Now, I was looking at the snow tracks and I disassembled them and I realized, wait a second, maybe I could just, but then no, it was too long. Then I realized I don't actually need these parts here. I can chop this off and chop a bit of that off and it'll fit with the nut on. 
I just need to make a spline adapter. So I jumped back onto Fusion and modeled this bad boy. And after a measly nine attempts, I got one to fit. Nice, right. We can't just make this out of PLA and hope that's gonna hold together. We have to get this CNC machined. And if you hadn't realized, I don't know how to CNC machine, neither do I have the equipment. So lucky for me, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a custom prototyping service that can CNC machine, 3D print, and even injection mold your crazy ideas. It's super easy to upload your parts, select your materials from their wide range, and even choose what type of service finish you want. Then before you know it, it'll be on its way in the post. So if you're like me and don't have all the tools and expertise, then head over to PCBWay. Now whilst we wait for them to do their magic, let's look at the front skis. Now it seemed the skis just bolted straight on and worked as they should, except this would happen. Nothing's ever that easy on my projects. How are we actually gonna fix this? The skis already have these sort of bracket with two bolt holes, which I assume was designed to bolt directly into some sort of like brake bracket or something like this. But my go-kart doesn't have front brakes, so what are we gonna do instead? After fingering the kingpin for just maybe a bit too long, I realized that I could fit a bolt up inside underneath, and then I could fabricate a bracket with a thread, grind it into shape, and weld that bracket onto the upright of the ski, stopping rotational movement and locking in the skis properly. Then these fun little dampers could do their little job. Awesome news! I just got word the parts from PCB Way are arriving today, which is awesome! We're gonna go freaking destroy the snow and ice out there. But I did think about something here, right? This rubber doesn't look like it's gonna grip very much on ice. So I was thinking, what if we put studs in it? What's a cheap way to get studs done? Well, self-tapping screws, or at least in my head, self-tapping screws. They're hardened because they need to be to drill through things. So I think they should be good. And then if I hit any ice, I should have some sort of grip. I hope. <laughs> As I prepare the tracks for snow and ice, inevitably in my luck, warm weather hit. Come on. But that wasn't gonna stop me. I'd find some snow somewhere. And my parts had finally come from PCB Way. <laughs> like a glove. Nice work, PCB way. And me, I, I designed it, I guess. And I found a patch of snow, and it was time to let this thing rip. Come on! Stupid global warming. We're gonna have to find some better snow than this. So I decided to take the four and a half hour trip up into the mountains to my mother-in-law's cabin to find some snow. And I grabbed my good friend Frederick to come along for the drive. Ready to go? Lucky for us, the four hour trip is not boring at all. Cause we get on like a house on fire. But despite the lack of excitement in the car, it's trips like these that make you remember how really beautiful Norway is. And after a bad call by Frederick not to put chains on. You're the one that we didn't need chains. <laughs> no, I never said that. You said that. <laughs> we finally got there. Hey? Yeah, I've 
uh, I'm not very good at skiing. That's why I built a snowmobile. <laughs> now, there was one little thing I forgot to mention about my mother-in-law's cabin. You can only get there on snowmobile or on skis in the winter time. And it was a 12 mile trek into the wilderness to get to this cabin. And I had no idea if my snowmobile could even make it. I needed goggles, I couldn't see <laughs> you okay? Yeah, screw skiing. Can you just tow one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I was so impressed. We'd made it a third of the way and nothing had gone wrong. Ooh. How good is this? It was so easy. Yeah, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Going back there. It's so nice. Only thing is, I should have some airplugs. Yeah, it was loud. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of Frederick's ears bleeding, we tracked on. And I was really happy it was Frederick on the skis and not me. After all, I've been told I look like a giraffe on skis. I think it's your turn now. <laughs> oh no. Ah! <laughs> I was laughing, but all of a sudden Frederick had disappeared. Are you alright? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Frederick had thrown it off into a ditch and I didn't know if it was damaged and if we could go any further. <laughs> Not doing that again. <laughs> it was a close call. But luckily nothing was damaged. I think it was time that I got back in the driver's seat. Saying that, even with my bad skiing and Frederick's driving, we were three quarters of the way there. And with Frederick back on the skis, we were on the home stretch. Oh, feels so good. And it was only the last little hill we had to make it up. We'd be there. Holy smokes, this is a beautiful place. Somehow my engineering had held its own and we'd made it. It's not bad for a hand truck, is it? No, he's not. <laughs> like a hand truck snowmobile. Uh, it's quite cool. Some might say, why would you build such a thing? And to them, I say, why not? There's no story in just buying something. To say I built my own snowmobile from a hand truck is a story in itself. But to take it on an adventure with a friend, that is a life's memory I'll never forget. <laughs>